Hello everyone, welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. Today, we'll be talking about exception handling in Blue Prism. So, there are quite a few concepts, the underlying concepts for handling the exceptions. Right. Um, I have explained most of this stuff theoretically in my blog article and uh, you can check out the link for the same in the description of this video. I would highly recommend you check that out uh, because there isn't much to showcase uh, for this week but we'll be leveraging the concepts that I'm gonna uh, walk through today in our subsequent blog posts, right? So, um, all right. First and foremost, what, an what is an exception? So exception is anything, any uh, problem, any error that causes disruption in the ideal flow of execution of a robot, right? So let's say the robot was supposed to do two plus two, but somehow it's not able to uh, either fetch some value from the variable or any, any possible issue, whatever. The robot is not working. Um, if it is using some, um, let's say, internet, then internet is down, some websites, blah, blah, blah. There could be like tons of uh, issues that can occur, right? So, uh, which, which can cause the disruption. So, um, exception handling is the process of handling or recovering the execution of bot uh, by, you know, in, in the legible fashion, something that is that business has provided to you. So that's what exception incorporates and in exception we have three different stages right there are like three major stages there are actually quite a few as well uh, we'll be talking about the block and everything next time but these three the last three these colorful ones these stages the exception stage the recover stage and the resume stage is what i have also talked about in the blog article and um, let's um, understand what exception does so exception stage throws an exception by throwing what i mean is um that you're explicitly telling the bot that an exception has occurred so what could be the possible scenario right suppose um you're dividing two numbers right so um the result is going to be whatever is, uh, you know, the, the result of the division operation. But um, let's say if the number, the denominator in this, in this division operation, let's say if it is zero, then uh, the operation becomes invalid because we cannot divide a number by zero, right? So in that case, you may want to use something like a decision box and uh, Continue with your division operation only and only if the denominator is not equal to zero. If it is equal to zero, you can throw an exception, right? Saying that you cannot, like like a message, right? Like a log message, um, which can say that, oh, division by op zero is not possible. Please change your numbers or check your numbers or something like that, right? Some customized message. So that's how you explicitly throw an exception. So. In this example, the decision uh, node, right, the decision stage says that uh, number is not equal to zero. If it is true, continue with it. If the if we go with the no node, then uh, um, in that case, we use the exception, right? Just to showcase, let's say division um, or denominator not equal zero right something like this if it is true i'm just making this just to visualize and make better sense out of it um, so now if denominator is not equal to zero um, then you can continue with your calculation of uh, the division operation right let's say in here which is yes which means it is not equal to zero, but if it is equal to zero, then you can throw an exception, right? And this exception uh, detail and exception type and everything 
is what we're going to talk about later in the other blog articles. So that's how you explicitly throw an exception that, oh, something is problematic, please check it out. Now, once an exception is thrown, whether it's user, uh, like it's thrown by the user, or it's something that happens internally when the bot was executing, then that exception needs to be caught. We catch that exception, right? Consider this as an analogy for like the people who play basketball. You throw an exception and you catch an exception. So once so this catching operation, which means um, it like the bot actually goes into a recover stage. So it looks for a recover stage and there are actually quite a few uh, underlying concepts about bubbling and everything. Again, we're going to touch upon everything uh, in the subsequent blog articles. But for now, just understand the fundamentals. So you have thrown an exception, it is caught and caught by the recover stage which means the bot, whenever an exception occurs, it starts looking for uh, the recover stage, right? And now wherever it finds the recover, that's where the program goes in. So you don't have to physically connect using this link, you know, these sort of line links. You don't have to use that uh, to connect to the recover stage. It automatically, uh, the execution automatically goes there once an exception occurs, right? And recover, what it does is, it tells the overall execution of the bot that now we are recovering from something. So you have to make sure that there are no other exceptions that occur within the recovery stage. Within, um, when the bot is in recovery mode, it should work 100% of the times, so which means you shouldn't have like very complicated things which can have like errors or something in the recovery uh, mechanism of your robot. Right? I hope that makes sense. So, recovery stage is doing um, the catching mechanism. And if you want to get out of the recovery mode and continue with the normal execution, that means bot can now have, again, some errors, then we uh, go, we do that by the resume stage. Right? That means resume stage confirms that now the recovery mode has ended and you can continue with the normal flow of execution. So, um, <clears throat> that was the theoretical part. Just to give you a quick example, I hope this uh, uh, visualization helped in throwing the exception and everything. But I'm going to delete this. I'm going to use the same recovery mechanism. And what I'm going to do is, if you remember uh, last time, we were launching a training order application, we were logging into it, and then ending the overall process. Right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the launch stage or let me actually, you know what, not just delete it, but let's say take that out. So now launch is here and what I'm doing is I'm straight away logging in, but the application is not open. So it should throw an exception. Once it throws an exception, this is an internal exception. I'm not explicitly throw, throwing the exception because I'm not using the exception stage. So it's going to be like internal exception, which means automatically some error has occurred when the bot was executing and the bot, uh, the execution will actually move to the recover stage. Now I'm not putting anything in the recover stage, but you can put like any, any details. Like you want to do, let's say, write into an Excel file, maintaining a log of what exactly happened, blah, blah, blah. There could be like so many things that you can do. Anything that, uh, recovers from, uh, a problematic area, right? Let's say uh, sending out an email that, oh, there was some error uh, with the bot. Please check your stuff manually. That is also a recovery mechanism. Just logging uh, the, f uh, the error in an Excel file, let's say on a SharePoint, and then resuming all the other, like, you know, if the bot is supposed to do like 10 different processes, then um, if one is erroring out, doesn't mean that all the other nines need to be aborted. You can resume the ne next nine and for the first one which, which errored out, you can simply just log an error message saying that, you know, please check that out manually. And um, that way, instead of 100%, now you have 90% of the work accomplished and 10% can be done either manually or through rerunning of bot at a later stage of time. And um, I don't know, the system resources are available, when the internet is up, whatever the case may be that's causing the uh, disruption in the normal execution, right? So, um, what I'm going to showcase is, uh, it's going to go to the recover stage, recover, uh, 
which means it's telling us, uh, it's telling the bot that, oh, something is recovering. Resuming is telling that, you know, okay, it has recovered successfully and now uh, you can continue with the normal execution and then we're gonna end it, right? So let me show you how this works. Start login, it's going to the recover, resume, and it's going to the end, right? Now, I can also show you one more funny thing. If I don't connect this, so you see, logging in was the problematic area because of which the execution flow went automatically to recover, although there is no connecting stage between the two. There's no connection of arrow between the two, right? But if something happens with the resume, let's say I don't connect this resume to the end, what's gonna happen? Can you guess? I don't know if you did it right, but uh, so now with the recover, we have told the bot that, okay, we can resume and there's, it's, the bot is not in the recovery mode again, but because there's nothing that, that's gonna happen, so it's gonna wait for the end stage. The process didn't end at the end stage. It sort of, sort of like aborted here. So it's gonna go back to the recover. It's gonna keep on with the loop with an infinite loop. So just to showcase that's how it works. Logging in is error prone areas, resume, recover, resume, recover, and it's gonna keep on doing that. It's failed to see, you can see the error, failed to find stage linked from stage resume. So after resume, it's not able to find any stage. That's an exception because of which it's going back to recover and um, continuing this error exception handling, which is not a good way. So you need to have uh, like resume attached to the normal execution flow or if there's a separate workflow that you want to create after the resume, you can definitely do that as well. Right? If there's, let's say, a separate. Okay. How about this? So with resume, what you can do is launch and then log in. How does that sound? That looks good, right? If you try to run this, start login, that's erroring out. So resume, launch, then now it's launching. Now it's logging in, but still logging is having some issue because it's not able to, so it's getting back and back and then it's... Uh, so we need to check this program, that's all right, but it at least shows the overall concept that, you know, it's logging in. So you need to also, which is again, a good example, actually very good example. So now you see it's already, it's creating the instance of this training order application uh, like every time it's running through uh, the exception because the resume stage is launching it every time. So you need to make sure that your exception handling is incorporated in such a way that it doesn't end in a loop because the login stage is having some issue. I don't know what it is. We'll need to check that out. But if the issue resolution should be in a way that it actually addresses the problem, right? In this case, it's not even accessing, it's not even addressing the problem. It's just creating different, different instances. So you have to make sure, uh, let's say you want to try out three times, right? Then you can maintain a counter variable where let's say if the retry number is greater than three, then just abort the whole process and say that, okay, something was missing, something is uh, wrong, please check that manually. Something like that, I, I don't know, right? That's something that the business has to decide how they want to recover this problem, right? So that's how exception handling is. We understood the exception, recover stage and resume stage. Please, please do check out the blog article first and then go to the video because that's the legible sequence that gives you the theoretical part. And then um, once you look at the video, it sort of like stamps on or validates what you learned, what you understood. Right. And uh, for any other comments, feedback, please feel free to reach out. I got a blog on ProRPA.com. You can comment there. You can uh, comment on the YouTube channel. You can comment on the Facebook page, which is ProRPA. Uh, and, uh, you know, we have other resources as well. Uh, so, uh, which also brings me to another point, the Udemy course, we're going to bring that up uh, hopefully by next week. There is some changes that we are going through within the internal to our organization. But other than that, um, if you want to try out the book, if you are good with the books, please feel free to uh, uh, purchase one um, on Amazon. It's available across all marketplaces, whether you're in India, US, Ireland, France, no matter where you are, you have access to that. 
And um, if you have any questions regarding RPA, feel free to reach out to me at info at prorpa.com and uh, I'll be more than happy to address them as soon as possible. All right. Okay. Awesome. Thank you very much. Uh, I look forward to talking to you guys next week and happy automating. Goodbye.